Hey guys, I'm actually filming this very first clip here at the end of October, but I'm putting it at the beginning because I wanted to, uh, first of all, show you that my scar is healing nicely, but it's still quite visible. Uh, yeah, it's, you can tell it's kind of goes from, starts about by my eye there and goes to about, uh, yeah, about right there. That's when I had about my 15 of my stitches in. If you haven't, if you're new here, it's because I had a little bit of basal cell cancer I had to have removed. And it was a tiny spot right on my cheek. And in order to kind of patch it up, she had to do this long scar. But I think she, I think in about six months to a year, it's going to look pretty good. But it doesn't look too bad now. Uh, I did have another appointment scheduled at the end of the month because she did a biopsy on the side of my nose there, which also ended up being positive for basal cell. And I was supposed to have that done on the 27th of October, which is just in a couple of days from now. I did postpone that for November because I'm just not quite ready to go through and have that done again. It's it's a lot, uh, having your face all scarred and everything <laughs> cut into, and the black eye and the swelling, and yeah. Anyway, I wanted to just pop in here first and say thank you so much to all of you who left such wonderful comments uh, wishing me well with uh, my surgery and my healing and everything like that. It means a lot to me that you guys are so thoughtful. And uh, yeah, you know, scars are a part of life, right? I mean, uh, it's a sign of a life well lived, I guess. And I'm wearing my scar proudly. For the most part. <laughs> it did bother me quite a bit though. And does, but thank, thank goodness for makeup and we can do a little bit of cover up. I could probably do a better job covering it up if I really tried, but uh, anyway, I will now let uh, my vlog commence. So after this clip, we can go back to the beginning of October and I'll show you what I got done this month. And all right, I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye. Good morning and welcome back to my channel. It is October. It's October 3rd and I am getting ready to start my October stitching vlog. My name is Christine and this is my channel Calico Whimsy and uh, yeah, October is probably my favorite stitching month of the whole year uh, because of all of the fall and Halloween related stitching that I love to do. Yeah, so in the community, this is also referred to as Dark October, because a lot of people do Dark October stitching. And uh, I know that's not everybody's thing. You're just going to have to bear with me this month, though, while I go a little crazy, because I go a little crazy with Halloween and fall. So I thought that I would just get this started by showing you kind of what I've done already in the first three days, and also some potential things to work on this month. I laid out all of the potential things that I could work on this month and obviously I'm not going to do them all because there's a lot. I have a pile over here. Uh, but I did want to start with this. So there's the hashtag that um, Cat Talks and Misty and Stitches do over on Instagram called Fall into Mill Hill. And it started on the first day of fall and this was my start for it. So this is Fall Beach by Mill Hill and I only got a small start on that uh, back there on what was that September 22nd and I haven't touched it since because I was finishing up some other September stitching and now that October has started I do want to revisit this but I have so many things I want to stitch that I'm just going to have to um, decide what I'm going to spend my time doing so I had put this one aside because I wanted on October 1st to start a, another one for Fall into Mill Hill, or Dark Art, I guess this, this one isn't really qualified for Dark October stitching because it's not really Halloween related, it is fall related though. So this one here is called Fall Mailbox, and I, so yes, like I said, I started this on October 1st. Here is the floss that I sorted, and the reason I wrote the name of it on there is because I actually sorted the floss for this one as well as I think two or three other kits that I want to get started. So I was just spending the evening organizing floss because I'm kind of weird and I like to do that. <laughs> so that's that. And here is the beads. I'm not going to go over through all of the beads for all of these things, but I'll just kind of give you a quick glimpse at the beads and the little charm. It looks like, what is that? A little tiny leaf charm in there. Alright, so this is my progress on it, and it's got a bunch of strings hanging because I, as 
sometimes like to just load up a few so that when I sit down to stitch, I have all these ready to go. So here is the progress on my fall mailbox so far. And it's really easy to stitch and coming along nicely. So that's the one I started on the first. I'm going to try to keep up on all these on Instagram, but I don't know if that's going to happen because I have a lot going on. I might just do one big post on Instagram at the end of the month to show what I did. Okay, up number two is this one right here called Apple Harvest. And I went ahead and sorted the floss for that one as well on the second day of October and got a tiny little start on it. And I, whoops, let's grab my little camera needle minder there. I want to make some Halloween needle minders this month too. I got big plans. Uh, big plans that probably won't all come into fruition, but we'll hope. We can hope, right? Okay, so that's the start on that one for my second start. To, today is the 3rd of October, and this is going to be my start for today. And no, I'm not going to do a start every day of the month. I'm just getting, um, there's just a lot of little ones I wanted to do, and I thought I would start off the month getting some little, little ones done. So this one's called Eyeball Martini, and I have sorted the floss, but I haven't started it yet today, so I will go ahead and do that. Okay, so there's that. And then uh, the other ones that I want to do, so these are all from the this season. I feel like these were new releases for 2022. Am I right? I won't take the time to look for that, but yes, I do believe these were the new releases for this, this year. So we've got Spooky Cage, it's going to be one I have not sorted. Oh, I have sorted the floss for that one as well. Ooh, go me. Okay. So then maybe that'll be tomorrow's start. And then this one, Batty. I know I didn't sort the floss for that one yet. Okay. And then an oldie, but goodie that's been in my stash. This is not new for this year. This is an old one. And this is part of the series of all of the, the Love Heart series, the I Love series. And this was the I Love Halloween I can't believe I have not stitched that one yet, so that's going to be a potential new start as well. So those are the small ones that I have plans to do. Uh, let me move my coffee and take a drink first. Get that out of the way before I spill it on anything. So from last year, I started this one, and I would like to spend some time doing that. Let me unzip. Isn't this a cute bag? This is my little... Halloween owl bag. Let me get that one out and show you where I'm at with that. This is one that I had attached the fabric around so I can put it in a hoop. And I have not got much done on that. I was hoping I had more, but no. So I'd like to make some progress on that one as well because I think that one and then the, there I have a sunflower one. Those are the only two buttons and beads that I have that are ongoing. And I don't usually like to carry those over from year to year just because I buy so many of these Mill Hill kits that I really need to just get them stitched up. But this is cute, so I will give uh, this one some time. So I have a whole bunch of buttons and beads kits that I would like to get started. And I don't know how many of them I'm going to do, but I'm gonna show you some of the potentials. So. I've got the three Hocus Pocus. This is the trilogy. So we've got Miranda, Muriel, and Mimi. I want to start one of these. I feel like I want to start this one. So these aren't quite as big as the buttons and beads, but they're bigger than the small ornament kits. So they're, you know, a little bit more stitching involved. They're kind of similar, maybe more to like the Santas. So I've seen these stitched up and they're super cute. So I do want, and also didn't, didn't they just release the sequel to that? Finally, I think I saw something about that. So that would be a nice way to commemorate uh, the part, the, the long awaited sequel for Hocus Pocus. Okay, there's that. And then this one, because last year I stitched all of the small sugar skulls. Uh, and I have never done the big one. This one would be another one that I would want to do. And this one looks so fun because it has so many different colors of beads and floss. So I think this is definitely going to be a potential new start as well. I, you know I really want to start them all, but I have to be reasonable and realize that there's only so much time in the day. This one, 
Okay, this one I can just already see stitched up and on my mantle. Look at those colors. Yes, <laughs> I, have to, I have to do this one as well. Okay, now the lesser, the ones that aren't calling to me quite as much and don't feel the need to necessarily start them right away is this one right here, the Haunted Tower, which I love, but it's not, you know, it's not high on my list to do. And same with this one here. I love them both, but they're not um, super high. They look quite involved and quite tedious. So I'm, I'm thinking I'm probably going to save these until next year. Speaking of, you know what? I have some older ones in my collection. I forgot to drag those out too. Some older ones. I think it was uh, one of them is called Moonstruck. I'll have to go get that one because that's another one that I would definitely like to start too since it's been in my collection for a while. And another one that's not super high on my list to start but it's also very cute is this one right here called Autumn Bench. And I just love that as just all of the different fall trees and fall colors in it. So cute but not, not feeling the need to really start that one this year yet. And then uh, another one, this is a Mill Hill, but it's done on fabric. And it's a, one of a series of four different ones, and this one's called Haunted Crow, and it's done on this bright orange fabric. And these are the other three in the series there. And they're all super adorable, but I thought I would uh, just buy one of them and give it a try and see how I like it. So that's a potential start as well. And then non-Mill Hill patterns that I just recently bought that are kind of fall and Halloween related are these two that I showed in my in last month's vlog by the Cottage Garden Cottage Garden Samplings. And they're both adorable. I might just have to get a start on this one. <laughs> I haven't decided if I want to do them separate or do them all on one piece because the border in between, the way they do the webs, that looks kind of tedious. And I really like the way they look just finished up as little ornaments there. So let me go grab, uh, let me go look really quickly in, in my older collection and see what I have because yes, those older ones might need to be started as well. I warned you, I was going to go crazy. I'm telling you, I mean, and, and these are just, this is just the Mill Hills. These aren't even the other Halloween patterns I have in my collection. So I'll be right back. Oh boy, I'm back and I found a bag that I completely forgot about. So <laughs> I've gone even more crazy with these. Okay, the one's already in my collection from last year. There's Autumn Swing, which I completely forgot about all these. Look at how cute that is. I could like dedicate a whole entire year to stitching nothing but Mill Hills just to get all, and you know what? They come out with new ones constantly every year. Every spring, they come out with their new spring line, their new fall line. Okay, this one here is called Outdoor Adventure. Nothing like camping in the fall. Adorable. And you know, if you've stitched one of these, these these aren't easy. These don't, these aren't, I mean, these small ones I can stitch up in a day or two, so I don't mind if I buy a lot of those because I do get them all done. Now what I do with them and how I display them all, well, I'm gonna probably need about five more Halloween trees uh, because of all the ones that I've completed already. So yes, there's this one and this one here called Floral Pumpkin, which is adorable, but now, okay, that is all stitched in the back, I believe. Now, I probably wouldn't do that. Maybe this would be a good one to stitch on fabric so that I don't have to do all that loose stitching in the back. And this one I got last year, and I loved it so much, I can't believe I didn't start it last year. I think I was just too busy doing the other ones. So this is Spooky Gate. Which, wouldn't it look cute then? Uh, the way that I finished the Aurora Borealis with the little camper on the outside of the frame, this would look maybe cute as a coordinating piece to that. All right, we're almost, we're almost done here. And this one from last year that I almost started and never did because I was trying to figure out if I wanted to stitch this one on fabric as well just to keep from having to do all that background. I even sorted the floss, but I did not get started in that one. Okay, we're almost to the end here. 
this one right here. This is the one I was talking about, Moonstruck. Absolutely love that one, and the colors in it are so vibrant. And these are, so these are older ones, and they're all still available, but then there's this one right here, which is Moonlit Kitties. Definitely need to start that one at some point. Here's the colors, and we're down to the last two. So this was another trilogy series, and I have stitched one of them, but these are the other two. And uh, I remember the, the first one that I did stitched up really quickly. So, all right, well, now you got a taste of kind of what I have uh, in my collection to choose from. I don't really need to buy anything new, as you can tell, but um, I'm not going to make any promises. Okay, stay tuned and let's see what I get done in this October. Good morning, it's Saturday, October 8th, and it's a little bit too chilly for me to be sitting outside. So I'm sitting over here in my old stitching spot and to give you an update and show you what I've been up to this week. All right, so uh, one week has gone by and I wasn't as productive as I had hoped to be, but I did get some stuff done. I continued doing a little bit more on fall mailbox and finished all the stitching and back stitching. So I'm to the point that just the beading needs to be done. And it's adorable. Those little letters, after I backstitched them, were just the cutest thing ever. So I'm excited to get the beading done on that, but um, I, I probably will hold off and do all of the beading. I think I, I say that, but I don't know, maybe I'll do the beading. I feel like just, uh, it's, it's just been kind of one of those weeks where I've wanted to just pick up the little projects and just do stitching and not beading. So after I finished that one, I continued on doing a little bit of this one that I started and I got this far with it oh that's the back that's better <laughs> um, so I was just working in the light blue and then I got a little bored with that because if you see over here with the fall mailbox there was a lot of blue a lot of light blue and different shades of blue and then I got into this one and it has a lot of light blue plus the wagons blue and my stitching heart right now is desiring fall colors, so I was getting a little burned out with the blue, hence the reason I didn't touch my larger buttons and beads, um, the fall beach, because that has a ton of light blue in it. So I was just getting a little tired of light blue. So I worked on this a little bit and decided to swap the projects and work on... I think, had I gotten a start on this? Maybe I did. Oh, sorry if you hear my stomach growling. It's just thanking me for the coffee that I'm feeding it right now. Uh, yeah, I didn't get too much done on the, what's it called? Eyeball martini. But uh, I will definitely get some more stitches in on that. I think it's because I, I went ahead and started that one. But what it, there's a reason why I switched. To, oh, yeah, because I wanted to get another start on the next one. I know, it's like I'm all over the board. That's kind of how my week was. I was busy, and then I was just like, what do I feel like stitching? Oh, I feel like stitching this, because it has orange in it, and that's what I wanted to stitch. So I started this one, and of course I didn't go into the orange. I went into the black first, because when I looked at the chart, it looked really kind of confusing to kind of figure out where the light, medium, and orange were. So I needed some kind of, um, uh, like a base to go off of so I started with the black and the bird so that I can then identify more easily where the other stitches go. So that one's moving right along and today I need to start another one. So what's it going to be? Maybe the bat. I think I'll start batty today. And this is my other choice. Oh and you know I was after my last video, I was thinking, I knew there was another one in this series that I couldn't find that I knew I had, and it was that one right there that was, uh, what's it called? It's called Thanks. So I went digging around in my closet again and found this one, and along with it, I found uh, quite a few other small ones that I had forgotten about. So um, I'll show you those. So just when you thought I already had too many of these, 
Well, there's more. So I'll show you those. But yes, this is another one that I want to start. Um, that looks tedious, though. It looks like a lot of little tiny confetti stitches. But it's cute. All right, that's my plan and my update so far. Uh, maybe... Maybe I'll give you an update midweek. If not, uh, another week might go by. But, yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm feeling a little discouraged because my I just haven't had a whole lot of time this week. And I don't know that I'll have a whole lot of time this October. So I have to come to my senses and decide how many projects of the bigger ones that I really want to start. And I don't know. I'm kind of thinking seriously because I have a couple of... Uh, well, let me go grab them. Hold on. Okay, so do you remember I said I had started Sunflower Bouquet last year? Uh, I w went ahead and got that one to see how much I had started on it, and I was kind of discouraged to find out that I had barely started that. I even put the fabric around so I can put it in a hoop, but I did not get much done on that at all. So, like I said, I have two of them that are in progress now, and it's kind of making me not sure I want to start. Well, three. Three if you include Fall Beach. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm thinking I'm only going to start one more new big one this year, and it's either going to be, I think, the Sugar Skull or the Happy Halloween. <sighs> I need four hands and, you know, need to work in double speed to get all the things done I want to get done. <laughs> Okay, so let me show you all the other small ones that I found when I was looking for the one, the, the thanks. All right, let's start with one of the, I thought that I had done all of the painted pumpkins all in the series, but I didn't. As a matter of fact, I don't think I ever did. I don't think I ever did that guy either. So I still, I guess, have, and I don't think I am going to stitch that little What's he called? Hippie. The Hippie Pumpkin. He's cute, but I don't know if I'll stitch him. Uh, so yes, I have one with the painted pumpkins to do. We'll just pile them up. There's, there's quite a few. <laughs> this one, Pumpkin Delivery. Come Stitch. Come Stitch for a Spell. Halloween Owl. And then these two are kind of a matching set that go together. One is called Taboo Kitty and the other one is called Moonstruck. Another black and orange one called Enchanted Moon. Fall Sign. I mean Fall Fun. Oh, that's adorable which looks almost like a companion piece to this one, doesn't it? And also the thanks that I just showed you earlier. Those all can be kind of... That one's not a fall one. This one here, I guess it is part of the fall, and this is the one that Cat, Stitch, uh, Cat Talks is stitching. And it's adorable. So... A fall flamingo to add to the other flamingos I've stitched. And our final two we're getting down to with this one here is maple leaves and it's dimensional. There's two that you uh, stitch the small one and then attach it. Very cute. And then last but not least we've got harvest garden. So <sighs> I'm getting to the point where I don't know what to do with all of my finishes of these because they've completely overtaken my small... I mean, the ones that I've finished already, are, there's already almost too many of them to fit on my fall tree. And then I set up my fall tree that I bought last year, and I ended up putting my vintage felt Halloween ornaments on it instead. So I think I need to, I need to come up with another type of tree or another way to display all of my finished small mill hills. I just don't know. I'm just getting too many of them. I don't know what to do with them. But I can't stop stitching them, so the frenzy continues. All right, well, I'm going to get to stitching because it's Saturday, and I have dedicated myself to a big stitching day today, and I'm hoping to get a lot of stitching done on 
my little ones that I just showed you. And I don't know what I'll do after that. But I will see you soon with an update, and I hope you have a nice, happy stitching day. See you soon. I did want to show you the Halloween tree that last year I had all my little mill hills on, and this year I wanted to display all my little vintage felt ornaments on because they just look so cute and the lights make them sparkle. I mean, yes, I could overload the tree with all my mill hills too, and I might, but because these are my new ones, I want them to have their, their day in the limelight. So it's cute. Yes, I, I think I just need to get another Halloween tree. So I'm sitting here getting ready to stitch and I'm watching Sherry from uh, the Colorado Cross Stitcher who has a store, a local N LNS here. Okay, that's redundantly redundant. An LNS, a local needlework store here in my state. But uh, I believe it's about a 45, maybe 45 minute drive for me. So I have yet to make a little trip up there, but I'm going to do that soon. That aside, I sat down to start doing some stitching on this and realized there's a mistake. So this bar that I did across here is supposed to be down here and all these yellow stitches are supposed to be right here. Yes, I was happily stitching along and it's showing that my next row of yellow stitches is supposed to hit the top of the bird's head and I said, how can that be? So, yep, already I'm starting my day with having to frog. Very frustrating, but it's not going to take too long. <laughs> oh, the joys of cross stitching, right? When we, when the frog visits. Okay, I'm going to fix that and <laughs> move on. All right, it's been uh, probably under ten minutes, and it was a quick fix. I got everything unstitched and restitched back in the spot that it's supposed to be. So thank you, Sherry, for keeping me company while I unstitch and restitch. So after getting out my Halloween buttons and beads kits that I've stitched in the past, I realized that I don't have enough frames for them. And I was lurking around in the Facebook group uh, for Mill Hills. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head what the name of the group is, but several times I have heard that people said you can buy these pink frames at the Dollar Tree, which is $1.25 now, and you can paint them. And they fit your Mill Hill projects perfectly. So. I bought a couple of them and I'm going to spray them black. Well, I went to go paint them black, but uh, so I already opened one of them and it, the paint wasn't sticking to it. So I went out to the garage to look for some primer and instead I found this can of metallic Rust-Oleum. I'm going to try using that instead. Okay, I have spray painted the frames and it, they turned out okay, except I don't know how well this paint is going to stick. Let's see, on one of my edges here, where was it at? Mm, because the paint that I was spray painting over was kind of, oh, now I don't see it. There was a little glitch on here. Oh yeah, see, like right there. Uh, it, it seems like it's chipping off a little bit. So in hindsight, what I should have done is just sanded the pink paint off and just painted it, you know, then I could have just painted it. So if I get these again, which I will, um, I'm probably just going to sand them and paint them or even sand them and spray paint them because I do like the way this came out with sort of a, a metallic look to it. Okay, so let's just go ahead and um, try these. So this is what it came with. This is the board that it came with um, in the in, as it comes. So I'm obviously Going to need to cover that um, because these might well I don't know I mean these are full coverage but yeah it might show through so I cut some paper some construction paper this was all I had on hand um, but uh, yeah I just cut some paper to size and I'm going to add them to the frame and see how it looks all right so we'll start with this uh, mill hill called Ravens and so I tried this earlier before I filmed to put these in and I they do it did, does fit perfectly but I did have to trim off I think I don't know like one or two little lines of, of on the edge of the paper so not much at all and then they but they fit perfectly so we'll go ahead and put that in
I even have the little hanging hook on the back there, but I noticed that they're thick enough that they can just sit on my mantle. And that's how it looks. So they fit really nicely. And for $1.25, you can't beat that. Okay, let's put the next one in. And this one is my Midnight Farm that I stitched years ago. And I completely forgot that this one also has glow-in-the-dark floss. All of the white floss in the sky, the ghost, and the fence is glow-in-the-dark. And it's very cool. Once again, I just had to trim off a little bit off the edge to get it to fit. And that's how it looks. So perfect. Okay, I hope you give it a try, and I will be buying more of these. You could get, you could actually buy these by the case um, if you go to Dollar Tree online, if you live in the United States, and you can buy a whole case of these. But I, I usually swap out my stuff seasonally, so I don't think I need to buy a whole case, but it's definitely uh, would be fun to have these on hand if you don't swap out seasonal stuff and you just start to collect a bunch of these and want to have them hanging on your wall at the same time. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that, and thanks to the Facebook group for giving me that tip. I appreciate it. Now, in the past, I've showed you... Actually, let me go get my other... The way I've... The other ways that I frame these. All right, in past videos, I've showed these shadow box frames that you can get at Michael's that also fit these perfectly. Um, there's a really bad glare on that. So if you like to have yours behind glass, this is another option you could do. Um, not quite as affordable as the $1.25, but in hindsight, I almost kind of like the way they look not behind glass instead. So, But I do have a couple of these, and I do like them, and I like how thick they are, and they can just stand on a shelf. Can you kind of see? So if you like to have them behind glass, now this one has little pins up in the corner because I actually cut this one too small that it doesn't fit in a, one of those frames. It falls through the hole, so because this one has a backing on it that has like that's covered with velvet, I could stick these pins in the corner and it works for that. So this one will probably always have to be in this frame. And then the other option are the Mill Hill frames, which look like this. I can't put my camera back any farther, so I'm just trying to make it all fit. But the Mill Hill frames um, also just, just um, have a backing on them and they have the little stick you can put there. I think for the price, these aren't really the best quality of frames, especially because they have no way of, they don't have those little things to, to hold the backing in, so I just have to tape them. I mean, I know you can buy those, but I haven't done that yet, and since I'm always swapping things out in this, I just put tape on the back because nobody sees the back anyway, and so that is one option, and I did also back this one with a, uh, a complementary color to the back of the, to the perforated paper. I have like a light blue piece of paper behind it so that you can't see the brown through the holes. So those are some of the options for framing your mill hills. And of course, my little ones, I usually just put uh, the beaded hangers on those and that or a, a magnet behind, whichever you prefer. Okay, I'll see you soon to show you what I've been stitching. Good morning. It is Wednesday, October 19th, and I'm here to show you what I've gotten done so far. I have... I think, did I show you this already? That I have this one completed, ready for beading. I have this one completed and ready for beading. I have this one completed and ready for beading. I have this one completed and ready for beading. I have this one completed and ready for beading. So all of that stitching has been done. Beading shall commence starting this week. Um, 
what I have in progress is this one I started uh, I think around the 13th and I only have this much on it so that one still needs quite a bit of stitching and I'm on the fence about whether or not I'm going to go ahead and start another one this little bat I already sorted the floss but I have not started him I'm not sure if I'm going to start him this year or hold off until next year because I've also been really wanting to put some time in on my felt the felt Halloween wreath that I'm working on too so um I think I'm getting myself spread a little too thin with the stitching so stay tuned whether or not I do him or not because I'll have to see how uh, quick it goes to do all this beading and I really would like to get a finish on this one too this month all right that's what I'm going to work on this week uh, is some stitching some felting and some beading and then hopefully gosh the month is quickly coming to an end but I should be able to get these all done I uh, don't think I'll get them actually cut out, backed with felt, and ready to display this year, but that's okay because I do have a lot that I've already displayed. I have a little, my mantle kind of decorated, and my fall stuff sitting out. So these will probably have to wait to be displayed next year because I just, I don't know, cutting them out and backing them with and doing their beaded hangers is going to be probably a little more than I have time for this month. But. I'll definitely get them ready for next year and what else is there that I wanted to say before I let you go I think that's it I think that's all I have to say right now so I will check in in about a week and let you know how I'm doing or as soon as I get the beading done okay see you soon okay right after I turned the camera off I remembered what I wanted to say is that I think in this video at one point I promised I was going to make some Halloween needle minders but I have since found out that I have enough Halloween needle minders so I don't think I'm going to need to make any because um, I have a video somewhere in the back in, in, in the backlog of a charm bracelet that I bought that had all these little charms hanging on it and I think I even have more there's a tombstone and some other ones probably on a different project but they were all on a charm bracelet little enamel like little enamel charms and I clipped them all off of the bracelet and made needle minders out of them so I think I even have a yeah I have a tombstone somewhere probably in one of my old whips but I won't be making any more Halloween needle minders this year maybe I'll make some around Christmas and uh because yes I'm I'm lacking in the Christmas needle minders let's just say so okay bye for now I am so excited to give my friend Morgan Miss T and Stitches a shout out because she started a floss tube channel and I'm so excited. I always tell you, um, you can find her on Instagram, but now you can find her on Instagram and YouTube. She stitches dimensions, mill hills. Uh, she also crochets and uh, does all kinds of crafty things. So I'm sure her channel is going to be filled with all kinds of stitchy goodness and crafty goodness. And she loves Halloween and she loves frogs and all kinds of stuff. Okay, she has two videos as of my recording of this right now, and she has 36 subscribers, so she is in the under 1,000 subs club, so we need to help get her to 1,000 subscribers. So go check out her channel. She already has two videos for you to watch. One is a Mill Hill stash dive, and the other one is an introduction, and uh, maybe by the time you see this, uh, she will also have a, she's going to do a video of all of her Dimensions kits, so... Yes, that's going to be fun. Okay, uh, I need to get back to my beading. I wanted to show you something that I found at Target this week. Uh, just in case you live near a Target, you might still be able to find these. This is a, a three-tiered tray. And I have never owned a three-tier tray before. So I saw this at Target and I had to buy it even though I don't have too many things to fill it with. Uh, I have goals though to get this all filled with some cute little uh, stitchy Halloween stitchy pillows in the years to come. So I'm excited about that and I also last year at the Dollar Tree found these cute little pumpkins and I didn't really have anything to do with them, so I've sort of just had them uh, waiting. And then when I saw this little tiered tray, 
I, yes, I, I bought quite a few of these. I thought it would just be so cute to kind of stick some of these little pumpkins in here like that and just get, uh, and just get this filled with all kinds of stitchy goodness. Right after I turned off the camera, I had a great idea. So I went and grabbed one of my nail hills and had this idea that I could hang them from the edges. Look at that. Oh my gosh, I can fill this whole thing all the way around with all the extra ones that don't fit on my on my Halloween tree. Good afternoon and happy Halloween. It is Monday, October 31st, so it is officially Halloween. And I wanted to come on here and show you some of the things that I got finished up this week. But first I wanted to show you a friend of mine that I went to school with, high school with. Um, she doesn't live near me anymore, but she sent me this cool tumbler. I have my my tripod set, so I can't really change it. But anyway, it's this really cool tumbler that has obviously two of my favorite things, coffee and Halloween. It says I'm a nightmare before coffee. <laughs> I think that's so funny, so cute. So thank you, my friend, Sandy. Okay, uh, I just want to show you what I, how I completed my ornaments. Uh, this is the first one here. I got it beaded. So I did not get the backing done on any of these. So I'm not going to show you the back because that still needs to be done. But I got them completed all the way up to that point. And here is the first one. Fall mailbox. This one here I got. I decided to make the hangers on them a little bit shorter because I think they hang better on my Halloween tree when they're shorter. So this one has the really cute little charm there. Cute. Then I got this one here. Because I should try to show you kind of how the beads go. How the beads look. I love that one. Yeah, the beads, you can see a little better when I hold it to the side. Same with this one here. This one, I loved the big beads on this one. Look at how chunky they are. Look at that. So fun. I love that. Got the little cat. Uh, the French knot eyes look a little big, but <laughs> I'm going to leave them. That's kind of, I just did them exactly like it asked for, so uh, that's how they are. All right, and then finally this one right here, eyeball martini. I love, I love them all. They all turned out so cute. They never cease to amaze me with how beautiful they turn out. So you can kind of see the dimensional beads around the eyes there. So cute. So there I got all those done. Now you're going to see a pan at the end of this video of my mantle and a lot of the ways that I display my other Halloween decorations. But you won't see any of these because I already filmed that like several days ago, probably maybe more like a week ago. And uh, these are just going to have to go up with next year's decorations because it's Halloween and tomorrow I'm taking them all down anyway. But uh, before I let you go, I do want to show you um, how far I've gotten on Muriel. So last night I finished up all of her cross stitching and all I have left to do is her back stitching and her beads. And I'm hoping to, to do that tonight on Halloween. So um, if I do get that done before I upload my video, I will uh, show you that the finish of that. And if not, you're going to have to wait until next month to see it. But maybe I'll postpone uploading this video until I get this done just to have it all in the same place. But she was a lot of fun to stitch. I just love her colors. Really cute. So that's Muriel. And while we're at it, I also wanted to show you earlier in the video when I was telling you that I had a charm bracelet that I had made all my needle minders out of. I forgot that I bought two of them. So this is the second one. Uh, and this is kind of how it was when uh, before I turned them all into needle minders but you can see that they have all the little charms on them the little enamel charms and I just uh, pulled them all off and and uh, backed them with magnets and made some needle minders so just uh, keep your eyes open for ideas when you make needle minders uh, especially like this costume jewelry is works really really nicely for that kind of thing 
Okay, that's all for now. Enjoy uh, the little bird talk at the end and also a, a quick video of my Halloween display. And uh, they're mostly no hills. All right, it is November 1st. And before I upload my video, this is the final clip of my stitching. I got Muriel all done and she just turned out adorable. I have not cut her out yet because I'm not sure if I'm gonna cut her out or if I'm gonna frame her as is, but let me just give you a little bit of a close up here of the beads. I did a couple of little French knot there for the bat. And we got some beads here all going down. Quite a bit of back stitching on this, but it was all super easy because it was just kind of some, just outlining some back stitch. Couple little shoelaces there. Get a different angle here so you can see some of the beads but yeah she turned out adorable so she's one of the three hocus pocus witches um, I'll maybe do one a year so yeah I haven't decided if I'm gonna frame them you know maybe in a like a what do they call those a triptych or something like that or if I'm gonna cut her out put a magnet on her or hang her as an ornament hard telling but She's done, and she's cute. Good morning. It's time to talk about some birds. And earlier this month, I was wondering which birds I'm going to talk about. And then I, well, just about, I, I notice about every year, there's about one or two days in the fall during migration that I get a whole bunch of, I think they're starlings and grackles that come through my yard. And they just come in this big flock and they only stay for about a day or two and they kind of take over everything and hang out in the trees. And I got just a real quick video of that and I thought to myself, yes, it's appropriate in October to talk about blackbirds. So I pulled out some cards out of the stack here and figured uh, the most common ones to talk about 
that every, the two birds that most of us think about when we think about October and fall and Halloween is the American crow and the common raven. So the American crow, like we all know, looks like a black bird, very familiar. And here's a close up. I mean, I think these are probably pretty much around the world. I'm guessing, I'm guessing that crows are everywhere. Uh, common and widespread, certainly one of the best known birds in North America. They feed uh, feeds on a great variety of animal and vegetable foods. Large, all black, distinguished from other crows and ravens by structure and voice. So that's probably the most interesting thing to talk about is when you're looking at a crow and a raven together, how to tell them apart. So here's now. Let's just read a little bit about the raven. Uh, it's, it's interesting. It's like almost showing that they're not. I guess they're not really down south in Florida. I guess you guys don't have ravens down there? Oh, I didn't know that. I guess I would have thought they were everywhere. Uh, habitat is varied from tundra to coniferous forests to arid brushlands, often in mountainous regions, usually in pairs or small groups, rarely mixes with crows. In fact, is often attacked vigorously by them, and their diet is diverse. Okay, interesting. So I guess maybe most of the time I think when you see a... Uh, a crow. It's probably a crow and not a raven. But I took an online test to see if I can tell on eBird, I think it is, there's a, an online test you can take where they show pictures of bird, of crows and ravens together. And the most uh, distinguishable difference in them is their beak. If you can tell that the, the raven has a very thick, kind of a robust beak. And I think just in general, they're larger in size. And the other difference that you can tell is how they sound. I think one has more of a um, a barking sound. Yep. I love both of those birds and I, and they're, uh, I don't know about ravens, probably so, but there's lots of information and documentation about how smart crows are too. And if you ever have a chance to watch a documentary about them, they are really intelligent as far as birds go. Okay. Those are your crow and your ravens. Next, we're going to talk about the grackle, the common grackle, and the European starling. As I had mentioned when I started this clip here, that I usually, the only time I see them in my yard is usually when they just are kind of flying through during migration in the fall. And uh, then if I have my camera ready when they come through, I try to get some good pictures of them, which I will insert some here so you can see some pictures I've taken in the past. Now, this last time they came through, uh, I didn't really have my camera charged. I really wasn't ready, so I just grabbed my phone camera and took a little bit of a video just to kind of show you the uh, little glimpse of the sheer number of them that come through my yard. Okay, so let's first talk about the European starling, and this is what they look like. They're pretty distinguishable by uh, these little, like, white dots that they have on, on them. Um, but both of them have this most gorgeous kind of iridescent purplish blue color on them. They're actually really gorgeous birds, even though when they come through, they're kind of bullies. I mean, they bully the feeder, they kind of take over everything and all the other small birds sort of leave and, you know, let them, you know, kind of do their thing and then move on. But uh, they are really gorgeous birds if you ever have a chance to see one. And yes, it looks like they're very common. So chances are you probably have seen one because they're just about everywhere. Uh, it says one of the most common birds wherever human settlement occurs. Nests in birdhouses, crevices in buildings, and tree cavities. Forages on the ground for grubs, worms, insects, seeds, and, and the like. Or in trees for fruit. Sorry, I'm trying to read through my camera here. Um, so yes, so they, uh, they're uniform blackish in color, yellowish bill, and distinctive white dots of non-breeding plumage, distinguished from all other birds by shape and habits. So yeah, depending on whether you're looking at a male or a female and whether it's breeding or non-breeding, they look, uh, they can look a little bit different, but yes, so they have a yellow bill and okay, so it looks like their bill is only yellow. Uh, let's see. The adult non-breeding, 
I guess so. Yeah, apparently, and then the adult breeding. So I guess when the uh, during breeding season, I guess their yellow their bill bill turns to yellow, and they get an oily greenish black color overall. So yes, when not breeding, they kind of I think more blend into the background and try to not be so uh, they don't stand out quite as much, and that's when you can see their white dots. Yes, I think most of the time we that feed birds. Uh, like to feed like the songbirds and stuff. We don't necessarily like to have the grackles and the starlings at our bird feeder, like I said, because they can be bullies and knock all the food and scare all the other birds away. But they're beautiful to photograph. So then here we've got the common grackle, also common widespread nests in trees, especially dense evergreens such as junipers, forages, seeds, and invertebrates on the ground in open areas, trees, and within open woods. So they are uh, larger and heavier than blackbirds with a longer, thicker bill and much larger with distinctive keel shape. Okay, and that's kind of where you can find them at there. And yes, I will, you'll see in my picture just... I didn't already show it just how beautiful they are and their eye is, is very unique. They've got that kind of that yellow eye. All right, so that's our common grackle. Now then the last one we're going to talk about is a brewer's blackbird and I don't know that I've ever seen one but I'm guessing I did. I have. I mean because it looks like they're pretty common. It says common and widespread often in parks and parking lots as well as agricultural fields and other areas, forages for seeds and insects on open ground. I'm sure I've seen one. Now, don't know if I see, you know, one next to another blackbird, like a grackle, if I would be able to tell the difference. I mean, you know what? I'm wondering if the picture I took is, oh no, I know, I'm sure it was a grackle that I took a picture of. But yes, I'm, it says very glossy black overall, even though this picture is kind of showing it being kind of purple and greenish, and I think that's the way the light hits it. But I'm sure I've seen a blackbird. I just don't think I have a picture of one. Um, and it looks like when, uh, oh, the female is definitely a sort of a duller brown color. Yes. All right. So, uh, yeah, it says more slender than the red-winged blackbird with longer and th longer tail and thinner bill distinguished from grackles oh here we go by a um, smaller size thinner bill and a square tail so yeah you know I could sometimes think I'm seeing a grackle when I'm actually seeing a brewer's blackbird oh, very interesting and then when I was looking through my cards I found this one this one here is called a purple martin and I have never seen one. I'm guessing that, is this an Eastern? Yes, it's an Eastern North American bird. I don't think we have these in Colorado. So you'll have to tell me, do these look black when you see them? I mean, they're called purple martins. It says all bluish black. So I'm guessing that when you see this bird, it probably looks a lot like a black bird, except for the female who has the white, sort of the white mottled look underneath on the chest. Now, yeah, it shows that we do get them in Colorado. I don't know what the brown means. Maybe, maybe that means non-breeding season, whereas the green is maybe breeding season where you can find them. But it also says um, common um, nests almost exclusively in man-made martin houses. Okay, placed in open areas near water forages. So that's kind of like our bluebirds here where you have to have specific bluebird nests and, and kind of like in open areas. So... It's our largest swallow, so it's a swallow, so yes, it's a, it's going to be, yeah, I can tell by the tail there that it probably looks like a swallow when it flies. Uh, adult is, uh, adult male bluish black, uh, can be confused with a European starling. Okay, so there we go, so they do look a little bit similar to the starling. All plumage, all plumage is blackish above with dark head and breast, very dark underwing, coverts and streaked or speckled belly. So yes, that could make them be, look a little bit like the starling, I would imagine. So okay, I've never seen one of these and uh, maybe someday I will. All right, that is going to be it for all of the variety of blackbirds that you may see in your area or you, maybe you wouldn't see in your area, but I think it's all very fitting for Halloween and October. So hope you enjoyed this section and I'll see you next month. Thanks for watching.